Thank you everyone for attending. Come on in, join us for today's webinar on Google Voice. And I am going to hand it over to Katrina, uh, to Mora from Maricosta College. Um, so my name again is Katrina Tamara. I am a teacher from Miracosta College. Um, I teach in the um, ESL department. Um, and so uh, normally um, we have people in, a, in the office who contact students um, and they're still doing that, but it's, this is a, Google Voice has been a really nice way for me to be able to reach out um, so that it's not somebody that they my students don't know um, contacting them. Um, it's, it's a lot more personalized. So I'm gonna try to uh, take a look at, um, at chat and question and answers. Um, so the first thing I wanna do here is um, to let you know about our objectives, okay? So we're going to um, learn about devices um, needed to use Google Voice. Um, we're going to learn about ways in which Google Voice can be used. Um, we're going to learn how to cre create a phone number for work use. Um, and we'll learn about texting, placing phone calls, and keeping communication logs um, with Google Voice. And we'll also discuss the benefits um, and possible issues that come along with using this. Hopefully today I can give you another tool to use um, that has worked for me. Okay, so you, I know you want more privacy. Um, and that was really important to me, um, but I didn't know how, so I experimented with Google Voice. Um, if you're anything like me, you have family at home <laughs> and maybe a couple kids, um, and you don't really want your school messages and messages from your students coming to your cell phone. Um, it's just, I want to maintain um, privacy when I'm working from home. I wanna keep my, my lines for me and my family. Um, but I also want to be able to have the freedom to contact my students and have them contact me when they need me. Um, so, uh, you can maintain maintain um, your privacy while working from home, and you don't have to use your personal phone number to communicate with students. Okay, um, and you can uh, place calls and send texts for your uh, uh, from your computer, your cell phone, or your iPad. Um, and you can also use headphones to keep calls private and avoid bothering others in your home. Um, I actually had a, a student contact me and she was asking me to call the police because she was being abused in her home. Um, this just happened, the domestic violence is on the rise and that was one of the things that was communicated to me. Um, so it, it was, I needed to, to react quickly, uh, but I didn't need my, my kids hearing what was going on as well. Um, so this was really nice to have my headphones on um, and be dealing with, with that situation and being able to help my student without bringing it into, um, into my children's ears. Um, so, um, so you can also keep a record of voicemails and texts you uh, receive while filtering out unwanted calls. I don't know if you've ever, <laughs> if, if a student's ever contacted you and it's been a little inappropriate or something, but you can catch those um, and it doesn't have to come, um, you know, appearing on your personal cell phone or your, through your personal number. Um, and uh, you can keep a record of the voicemails um, because they, they, um, it goes directly to um, text. So it's actually, um, it, they send you um, a transcription of your voicemails and um, texts also are um, sent to your emails. So you can, there's lots of ways to keep track of what people, what students are saying to you and when they last contacted you. Um, and let's see here. Um, so again, it, Google Voice can help you catch inappropriate calls. It helps me do that. Um, you, can, um, and you can initiate call blocking. Um, it transcribes what students say in a voicemail and emails it to you. Um, texts stu uh, that students send you are also sent to your email. 
um, text chains can be archived and you can reply by mail. Again, this is just really useful when you're um, trying to keep track of when you talk to someone, when they left a voicemail for you, when they texted you. You can just check your Gmail account um, or whatever email account you assigned for this um, and it will um, it, it'll be recorded there. So I see I have a, question, a couple questions, so I'm gonna stop right here. Um, so what did I use for my graphics? Um, I use Buncee and I also um, am using my Bitmoji to create my presentations. Um, and will it be possible for you to show us how to store texts and calls? Yes, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how that's done automatically. So that's uh, really important when we're trying to not spend so, you know, um, online seems to be all the time right now. Um, so this helps cut down some of the work as far as, far as um, writing down when um, and who contacted you. Uh, voicemails are transcribed. What, what about extreme accents? Um, it's I haven't had a problem with it. It's been pretty pretty accurate so far. Um, and um, of course, if you know this know the students or you know your student group, you kind of typically can get whatever word that they were trying to say anyway. Um, and is it okay to give a, a Bitmoji your personal information? I was put off by that. Um, you know, that's a personal choice, and you can also create um, work versions of all of these things. So you can keep um, your, your Bitmoji and your emails, you can make that just for work so you're not signing up with your personal information or um, sharing too much of your personal information um, with, with Google for the purposes of communicating with your students or doing presentations, et cetera. Um, and um, is it possible to link my current Google Voice to another email and not my personal email? Yes, it is. Um, you just, uh, there's a setting for that. Um, so uh, let's take a look a little further into Google, to the Google Voice. Okay, so here's some things that you might be wondering right now. Okay, so another thing that question I get is, does it cost anything? No, um, they're not going to charge you for signing up, um, not unless you want to make international calls. Um, and at that point, they say to use WhatsApp if you're making international calls or from outside of the country. Um, so this link here, if you get my presentation um, in the email in an email, or if you visit the OTAN site and later on you want to see um, what the fees are for different international calls, um, you just click this link and um, it'll have a list of all of the calls uh, or all of the charges for international calls. Um, and do you need a, a Google account? Yes, you need a Google account to set this up. Um, but like I said, make a separate one, one that's not associated with your family and friends and your daily communication. Um, you can make a, 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 um, an account that you designate specifically for using um, with your students or for your job. Um, do I need to use my phone number? Yes, you need to use a US phone number um, with forwarding capability because these are this is basically a call forwarding system. Um, so it need, does need that capability. Um, phone calls and texts will be forwarded to your new Google Voice number. So your, it, um, all of the calls that are that you are placing um, start with your number, but then it's forward. It, um, it's appears on um, on the user, uh, uh, the recipient's end as a different number. Um, okay, I'm getting a couple questions here. It says, what is the interface between Google Voice and Google Hangouts? Um, Google Meet isn't free, right? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but Google Voice, uh, I believe, does a few more things. Uh, I, when, we, when we go into it, you'll be able to see what it looks like. Um, uh, do you, do I use up minutes? Um, and I, I think if it depends on how you're um, you're placing your call, especially if you're on like the you're using it from your from your computer um, and you're just using your internet, your 
um, Wi-Fi to connect, it's not charging you anything. Um, you're not using any minutes. You don't have to use a, you don't have to use your phone, um, and that's the really cool thing and my preferred way of using Google Voice. Um, so can you delete the phone number they assigned to you and get another? Yes, um, you can. Choose, you can switch numbers and you can assign them to um, another account. You can, in the settings, they do give you that capability. Um, is there a feature in Google Voice to limit what time frame calls can come in, say not before and not after a certain time? Yes, there is. And I'm going to show you that today, I believe. Um, and um, I have a Google account with my personal email. However, if I make a new email, can the phone uh, with my phone, with my personal email, however, wait, if I have a Google account with my personal email, um, if I make a new email, can the phone number I already uh, be selected to be transferred to a new email? You can, you can designate, um, definitely designate which email your, um, the transcriptions are going to and which email you are using for Google Voice. Um, yes, you can change your email, you can change your number. Um, Okay, so let me take a look. Um, if I'm using personal phone, can I block a number? Yes. Um, so let me let me go on. I know some of you are getting confused because you're not quite sure what it looks like. So um, let's go into it, and then afterwards I'll try to catch some of your questions that are coming in. They're really good questions, and I know I've asked the same ones. So um, you're absolutely right um, to be asking about that. Um, so let's take a look. So what do you need? That's, that's the uh, biggest question here. You need an existing phone number. Some people have asked, do I need a cell phone number? Can it be a landline? Um, I believe you can use a landline as well, um, and they'll just send you, uh, they'll either, if it's on your cell phone, they'll send you, um, they'll text you a code um, to use to set up your account. Um, and if it's a landline, I believe they call you and give you the um, give you the access code. Um, so uh, you you need an existing number for sure, um, and you need one of the following: a computer with internet connection, um, or the app on your phone or tablet. So it can be used on the iPhone on your iPhone, on your Android. It can be used on um, an iPad. Um, and you, but you don't need to use it on your phone. You don't need to use it on a tablet. You could just use it on your computer, which I'm going to say is my uh, preferred way to use this. Um, so uh, Google accounts, um, you do need a Google account. And I know some people are like, oh, I don't wanna give up my privacy in that way. But like I said, I highly recommend just creating a Google account that's all for work. Um, and then you don't need to worry about mixing it up, okay? Um, and headphones are optional. And like I said, I think it's a really good way um, to keep things private so that you're not, disturbing other people in your home that you're living with, and also you're keeping those calls private, um, private communications between you and your student, um, if they call you and have a question, etc., or a personal issue like, call the police, my husband's hurting me. Um, so, and that was no, that was a very serious matter. I'm so glad that I was in that position to, to call for my student, like I was telling you about earlier. Um, but also so glad my children didn't hear. Um, so how do you get this? How um, are you going to load this into uh, your phone or access it on your computer? Um, for cell phones, um, here are the basic instructions. And these are good for both Android phones and, um, and Apple phones. Um, and you need to... Um, for the uh, Androids, I think you do go Google Play, and for um, iPhones, you do the App Store. Either way, you find the app, you download it, um, and then you open the Voice app um, in, um, 
and then you open up uh, the app Google Voice and then you sign into your Google account so you might you'll make that beforehand um, so set up your work account and then use that to, to log in um, and then review the terms and uh, of service and privacy policy and then you'll continue and then you'll be able to pick a voice number so um, I highly recommend picking a number um, that is um, that would be familiar to your students. Like I live in the 760 area, uh, area code. So um, I want to use that um, or yeah. Um, so I want to use that when I am setting up my um, phone number so that my students, when, when I call them, that it's not going to be like from, uh, appearing to be from a different city or state or something. Um, they uh, do not have 1-800 numbers either. So just set up one that looks most familiar uh, or you think would be most familiar to a student. Oh, so they, they could identify it as being from a, a local call. Um, and so you can search by city or area code for a number. Um, and then um, you're going to uh, Pick the number that you want and then select and then tap to select that number. And then that number is yours. Um, and again, you can change all of this. You can change the number late at a later time, but for the initial setup, this is how it goes for cell phones, iPads, Android, or Apple. Okay. Um, and this is what it looks like. Okay, so um, for the phone setup and use, you're going to download the app. Okay, you're going to um, open it on your phone. Okay, and then you'll look for it on your, uh, your phone screen. And then it looks like this. This is the little icon. Um, and then you'll sign into the Google account. Um, again, make a new one just for work. Pick a phone number that's local. And this is a big one. If you are using um, the, your, the same, um, well, first of all, don't sync your contacts. If you don't want um, your personal numbers mixed in with your Google contacts, okay? Um, so unless you want to use, um, if you're gonna be placing calls to your family and friends from a forwarded number, <laughs> um, I don't think you want to do that. Um, but if should you prefer to do it that way, that's fine, but um, you probably don't want to sync your personal contacts. So if you do, by, do, do that by accident, you can unsync them by going to the app setting on your phone. Um, so you're just gonna go to uh, settings and then look up um, Google Voice, and then it'll say unsync, or uh, it'll, it'll have a little um, button there for you to turn off that feature. Um, so I really highly recommend uh, being aware of that um, and keeping track of that. So um, because you just don't want to mix it up. Um, so once you're into the phone, or you're in, you've downloaded, you've opened up your app, you've set up your account, and you're ready to place a call. Um, you're going to look at your screen and you're going to press this icon to open the keypad. So this, this is what it looks like. You press this and then you'll find the phone number. Okay, so now you can place a call and the call will be routed through another number. Okay, um, and here are the icons you're going to see. You're, you'll see a phone call. Um, and then you'll, you'll have the contacts and text messages and voicemail. So if you get a voicemail, you can, um, you'll know it by the little red mark um, above the voicemail symbol. Um, and icons on the front page are called, um, the icons on the front page are call, contacts, text message, voicemail, and you um, can pick up transcripts of voicemail from here too. So if somebody sends you um, a voicemail, you can look in Google Voice on your phone and you'll see uh, the transcription there. It sends it as a text. Um, so let me take a look. It looks like we're getting some questions here. Um, let me see. Uh, if I call out to a student, uh, the phone and the Google Voice will tell the student it's from a different number. How does Google know I want that versus I'm calling my sister and not? Okay, so that's why you're going to keep this different because if you're using it for your, if you're using Google Voice, it's because you don't want people to know your phone number. 
Um, so like I said, don't use this to call your sister. Don't use this to call people who are waiting for your call and recognize your number. Um, start new with a separate account and make this just the number that your students will as associate with you. Don't use it for your family and friends. Um, and Hangouts, uh, an instant message, okay. Um, let me see here. Is it possible to make international calls? Yes, uh, you can, but there, is, there are costs associated with it. Um, and I have a school account associated with uh, Google Suite. Um, yeah, so the voicemail is linked to my school email account and I can listen to it. With, yes, so that you can choose whichever um, email account you would like to um, use this with. Initially, to sign up, you need a Gmail, or not a Gmail, but a Google account. So you do have to go through Google. You do have to sign up for an account to get Google Voice. After that, if you'd like to um, assign a different email or a di um, associate it with a different number, then you can do that. You can go to settings and you can change all of that. Um, but for the initial setup, um, you should use, you're going to have to use a Google account. Um, can I have two different Google Voice related to one phone number? I have not tried that. Um, uh, that is an interesting question. I'm sorry, I don't know if you could use the same one. Uh, two accounts related to the same phone number. I'm not sure um, how that would work. Um, and can we get a copy of these instructions? Yes, I'll send them, I'll make these available after this um, webinar. Um, and um, yes, I, like, like I said, keeping a separate Google account to keep a history of calls and texts that are associated with your students for the purposes of record keeping for your school and for uh, possibly um, establishing last contacts with a student, that would be a really good idea to just create one specifically for this. Um, and you can have it on two devices or, or more, whatever you can log into your Google account with, um, then you can use it on multiple devices. It will not restrict you. Um, will we get a copy of the slides and recordings? Yes. Um, is it free? Yes. Um, and yes, do not pay for an app. If you log into your, if you go into um, any of your app stores and they're asking, they're charging you for this application, it's not right. Um, okay, and so let's continue. I hope I've gotten to a lot of those questions. Um, let's go on to the next page. Let's go into computer instructions. So um, computer instructions here, um, will be to go to voice.google.com, and then you're gonna sign into your Google account. Um, you're gonna review the ter terms of use and privacy policies and all of that, and then you're gonna tap to continue, okay? Um, and then you're gonna search by city or area code for a number. And then um, next to the number you want, click select and then follow the instructions. Um, so the useful settings I've found when you're using um, your desktop, which I, I really prefer, I highly recommend just using this on your computer, put your headphones on, uh, go into your um, Google account, you know, your Google Voice account, and then start placing calls, texting people, um, sending voicemails, whatever you need to do, all from your computer, then that really frees up your phone. Um, but uh, somebody had asked earlier about the do not disturb, okay? So you can go into your account settings um, and you can find do not disturb and then you can turn off message forwarding and send calls to voicemail. So you can put that uh, if at a certain time, you don't wanna hear from people, you can do that. Um, and then you can also turn it back on. Um, and let's see, uh, accessibility settings. Um, if you need some high contrast colors, that's available in um, 
Google Voice. Um, it's really important for us to care for our own eyes and how things are um, affecting um, our personal health um, and how uh, I know staring at a computer screen for, for a long time um, can re really do some, do a job on your eyes. And um, so that might be um, a nice setting for anybody who is interested in um, more accessible um, settings. Um, let me check some questions here. Um, so are the settings for the app in the apps, uh, general app settings? I think what you're asking is can you set this for um, your, your, whole, your whole Gmail account or just for um, Google Voice? And yes, sometimes it's for your general uh, Google settings and some of it is just for Google Voice, depending. Um, and just like when we were looking at the um, accessibility settings, let's go back here. Um, some of these settings are for Google Docs um, and some of them are true for Google Voice. So um, check out when you go into settings, look at what the setting is for. Um, and um, how can you call if you have a landline? Um, so uh, you're just going, if you have internet and um, you have a computer, you can go ahead and log in to the, to the desktop version. Just go on to your desktop and open it up or to your laptop, log into Google Voice, and there you go. You can start placing calls um, because you have um, that your landline phone number associated with that account and also you have Wi-Fi and in that case they don't even need um, to be using your um, actual line. Um, can we use uh, this to call students with WhatsApp? WhatsApp is um, a, another option if you're going to be placing um, calls from um, outside of the United States um, to, pre to uh, avoid any charges. Um, and so WhatsApp is, is a complement to Google Voice, but um, they are not used together. Um, you use one or the other. Um, and how do you change your email address? That will be in settings. Um, so when we go um, to settings, I, I can show you that. Um, and I can't see uns unsync options. So um, if you're on your phone and you're looking for the, uh, you don't want your contacts to be um, syncing, um, then you're gonna go into your phone settings, not the Google Voice settings, but phone settings, and then find your apps, a list of apps, and then you're going to find one of these little um, buttons that you can just tap it, um, but it, uh, one of the, kind of the little blue settings, um, you'll tap it. Let me see if you can, I can show you one of these right here. If you can see that on your screen, um, it'll look just like that on your phone. Um, so you just tap it and it goes um, and the, it unsyncs your contacts. I don't know if that's a real word, but I think it is. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, does it work on Chromebook? Um, it does work with, if you can log into the internet, if you can, if you have internet access and you can open up a browser and get to Google Voice, yes, it will work. Um, and I'm trying to do this using my school email account, but it is requesting a voice license from my administrator. Can you mention something about th this, please? Okay, so if you're, possibly if you have some sort of um, a account that, um, is a group account that's being paid for. Maybe you can um, contact your um, your school and, and ask them about that. It's possible they don't want you using it. I, I'm not sure. Um, and let's see, or maybe you need some sort of permission from them um, or they want it all associated um, with one account. Um, and do you need a separate phone number uh, for each class? No, you can use the same phone number. Um, and do you need a, let's see here. Um, I have Google Voice set up with my cell phone number and I've been contacting my students. I want to open the account in my computer. Can I get the same number from my phone so my students recognize the number 
when I send material from my computer. Um, so it kind of would defeat the purpose if you're using the, the same number, your phone number. The idea is to disguise your phone number so it is a unique number um, and it's, it's not associated with your personal account. So you can use the same number with different accounts or you can um, add your, your, that phone number with as many, to as many sites or whatever as possible. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Here's some more settings that you'll find when you go, when you hit your uh, desktop and you open up your Google Voice account. Um, you can find your messages, calls, do not disturb, and then voicemail. You can set up a voicemail greeting, which is really nice, so it's very personalized. Um, and um, you can have multiple greetings. Um, and so you'll just click this button and um, you can get your, um, you can create a voicemail um, to greet your students. Um, and so right here is my uh, little button that I, I selected to get voicemail via email. So when you go into your account settings, you're going to want to make sure to select that so that you do get the transcription sent to your email. Um, and then um, let Google analyze voice transcripts. I did not select that. Um, I don't know. I just feel like putting it out there for further analysis might be a privacy issue. So I just selected no. But that might be helpful for people who um, it's um, they really want the um, accent problem fixed or something like they you're not quite sure what somebody is saying so um, this might help with that it analyze the voicemails and send you a more accurate um, account of what was said but to date I haven't really had a problem with that um, the transcripts have been accurate and um, I was able to understand them um, okay so let's go to the next one we're gonna see um, text to email so somebody texted me, right? So I opened up my email account and it says new text message. So uh, this popped up. Student sent me a text, uh, Katrina, teacher, good morning. I'm really sorry in the house, but I, you know, she's having computer problems. Um, so she couldn't connect to our Zoom, um, our live Zoom session, right? So um, that was sent to my Google Voice, but it was also sent to my text messages on my phone, and it was also sent to my email. Um, so um, I got the message, and it's also recorded here, um, and it also tells me, you know, later on I can look back at when this happened and who it happened to and why they met, missed class, okay? Um, and. I don't need to look back at my tech, my texts on my phone. It's all there. Um, um, and then we have voice to text as well. We have uh, a voice message. Okay, so the voice message comes in, right? Um, and then it um, get, gets transcribed. So somebody called me, left a voice message. And then that voice message was sent to me as a text to my uh, to my cell phone, but then it was also logged into my um, my uh, Gmail account. And also here, if I press this button right here, I could hear the voicemail and I could read the transcription. Um, and so this is an ESL student, and it was pretty clear. I really got the understanding that somebody had called him and said that he was not registered um, and he didn't know why or who called. So he was contacting me directly to find out if I could give him um, more personalized or more accurate information. Um, so um, that is the voice to text. Um, and so, oh no, you didn't understand anything I just said. Um, and you still don't know exactly how or what to do. Um, there's lots of help from Google. Um, and on this presentation slide, I've included um, some links to the computer, uh, information about the computer, um, information for your iPhone or your iPad or your Android. Um, and Google questions can are, are infinite. Um, and they have so many platforms and um, 
So I really encourage you um, to seek out those answers because they, they are there. Um, and Google is um, providing those answers for you, okay? Um, so now um, let's go ahead and visit my desktop, okay? So you can see what it's like to, um, to call or um, see Google Voice from your computer, okay? So you'll go here to Google Voice, and again, there's personal voice and uh, personal use and for business, um, and then you're gonna sign in, and I signed up as a personal account. My, my, um, my college doesn't have any account that they're using um, to do this, to use Google Voice, so I need to make my own account. Um, now, I did make the mistake of creating an account um, with my personal email. Uh-oh, like I've been telling you, don't do that, don't do that. Why? Because then all of your personal contacts are associated, all your Gmail, um, not, not from my phone, but just Gmail um, contacts are included on here. Um, so it takes all of, your, um, all of your contacts from all of the, um, the Google platforms that you're using that specific account for, um, and it puts them into your Google Voice account. Now you can take this away. There, it, 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 there are settings that can help you with that as well. Um, and like I said before, you could associate this number with an, a different account as well, um, but you have to do that in settings. Um, and let's see here. So here's, um, when I log in, I see um, some suggestions for people to call. Um, I see my, uh, my phone pad, my number pad here, and I can type the numbers in here or um, enter them right here. Um, and I can also check my voicemail, right? So here's voicemail. Um, here's the initial setup. Um, so they texted this to me, okay? Um, and then I also got the voice recording for it. So I'm gonna play it for you, okay? So you just click play. Welcome to Google Voice. Google Voice gives you a single phone number that rings all of your phones, saves your voicemail online, and transcribes your voicemail to text. Other cool features include the ability to listen in on messages while they're being left, block unwanted callers, and make cheap international calls. We hope you enjoy using Google Voice. Okay, all right, so pretty clear. Um, it's it's um, very usable, um, and I, I know what she said, and it, it was transcribed uh, correctly. Now, um, up here, I'm not gonna show it to you because it has the student's name, but when I played his voicemail, the tran transcription was uh, matched up very well as well. Um, so if I want to see my, uh, to see, uh, uh, new messages that I've gotten, right? So these are a lot of messages I've gotten from students. Um, so, um, it, all of those messages are kept right here. And I, I didn't, you could make an, uh, associate, um, you could make contacts for all these students. I didn't want to do that because I knew I would be open, opening this up and sharing it with you. And I didn't want to put people's names or faces or anything on here. So um, uh, you can go ahead and, and, and add contacts, um, but mine aren't set up that way just because I didn't want to expose anybody's information. Um, so you can send a new message. Um, so if you want to send a new message, you're going to pick the, the person's uh, number. So this is a text message, right? So you pick somebody's number. And then down here at the bottom of the screen is where you're going to add, enter your actual message. Um, and you can actually add um, images. I'm not going to click there right now in case my daughter's picture comes up or something because, again, um, I did what I I'm telling you not to do, and I set this up using an email account that I use for personal use. I recommend not doing that, okay? <laughs> um, just set it up um, as a personal work email. Um, and then so you can type that, and then over here is the send button. You're gonna send it. Um, 
And how do you get your, um, uh, to your um, voicemails? There's voicemails, text, and then you can place calls right here, right? This shows me um, the, the calls I placed, right? And generally when I place a call, um, I, I got a call back, but um, when I place a call, I receive text messages back. I'll call, leave a message, and they'll call back, right? Or they'll, they'll text me back. Um, and um, in, over here in settings, if you click on settings, okay, so it has my, um, my Google voice number here, and I can change it, transfer it, delete it. Um, and I have it on different web. Uh, I can um, have I have it on two um, two devices here, uh, phone, my phone and um, in a web account. Um, and let's see here. Um, it has lots of different settings here, like outgoing calls. Um, you can use Google Voice on the web to place calls on your phone instead of over the internet, right? Um, but I recommend using the internet. That way you don't, you avoid that. Um, and the carrier rates um, can apply, but usually it's only being charged when there's international calls. Um, so um, you can set it, always use my phone, or I don't put that because I want to use the internet to place my calls. Um, and I can do anonymous caller. You can hide your caller ID, but I don't, like I was saying, it's better that your students um, be, uh, start associating your phone number with you. Um, that's why you've created this number. Um, and let, but if you want to just make anonymous calls, you can put that um, setting on, but that kind of defeats the purpose of reaching out. Um, and then uh, let's see. Um, you have, uh, you can get alerts for missed calls. Um, you can get screen calls um, and you can hear the callers, uh, screen calls, you can hear the caller's name when you pick it up. I've done that before, I had this on. Um, and it does kind of sound like somebody is making a, um, a toll call. If you remember back in the day when you use, you know, the, um, the local public phone to call mom or dad or something and you didn't have a quarter, um, that's what it's gonna sound like. It's gonna sound like, uh, you know, so-and-so is requesting that you pick up or something, you know, it's, it identifies, it says the person's name and then you can decide whether or not to accept the call or not. It said, I think it says, do you accept the call? You have incoming call options, record call, uh, switch linked phone, so you can, uh, if you want to change the, the number or the phone that um, this account is associated with or you're getting um, calls to, here it is right here, incoming call options. Um, and then show my Google voice number as caller ID when forwarding calls, okay? So when you get a call through the linked number, you'll see the Google voice number instead of the caller's name, number, okay? Um, and um, you can set the do not disturb. I showed you that before. And then you might get concerned when you see the payments, current balance. You can add credit if you're going to be making lots of international calls or, um, yeah, so, um, or to places that there are charges for. Um, but generally, within the United States, our, Generally, we don't have, um, there's no charge for it. Um, and again, um, they do have a complete list, right? Calling rates, you can look up um, calling rates by your country. So um, that's where it gets, uh, where charges start to become a problem when you're making international calls. Um, you, can, um, you can filter your spam. Um, and there's, you can also review your privacy um, and terms of use. Um, so let's see here. Um, we have messages. Um, okay, so you can always use your phone to place calls. Okay, we did that before, right? Uh, so we've gone through all of the all of the account settings there. Um, and again, if you want to see that, you can go to. Um, this little icon, let me get my little pointer again. Um, you're gonna go to this icon, to settings, and that's where 
you will find all of these options um, which will make your life easier and um, put Google Voice to use for you. Um, and um, again, let me see here. Uh, so let me see if the oh, archiving, archiving, um, you can, if you get a lot of text messages going here. So I have, oh, I have so many. I don't need all of these, but I don't want to delete them either because I want to be able to uh, track which, which numbers I called and who responded and all of that. I can just archive. Okay. Um, so, and, and it'll, um, just like these groups, I went ahead and archived, um, my my message chains um, so that when I log in I, I don't see those I wanted um, I wanted to just see this group that I was making contact with um, so let me take a look at what kind of questions we've got going on um, is there a way to text some information while we are talking um, that would be interesting. I haven't tried texting and talking at the same time, but as you can see, um, let's see, if you send the message, you do have your, the, the option for um, making phone calls is still open and, and the text line is, is still open as well. And again, I want to just show this to you because this, um, this was confusing for some. Um, this area right here is where you're going to type the name or phone number when you're, when you're texting someone. And there's all this white space, okay? This white space is gonna fill up with all your text messages, okay? Um, and you're going to type your message down here below. And you can add photos um, and all of that. And then you can send using the little um, paper airplane symbol. Um, so, my gut feeling on that, even though I haven't personally tried it out, is that, yeah, you could text and, and call at the same time. Um, let's see. A lot of this, um, it'll be fun for you to play with it and see what works for you and see um, what um, is, is most beneficial. Um, and so how do you get students the Google Voice phone number? Um, I um, post it in my syllabus. Um, when I uh, contact them, I say, this is your teacher, Katrina. This is my phone number. So I state it. And then they have it also, um, if they have um, caller ID, they, they have it um, there. So they could just, a lot of times when you call a student, um, they'll just see a number and then they'll call it back. So um, that's, that's really nice. Um, so there's, you can post it in your syllabus, you can, you can um, give it to the front office of, of your school and say, if students are trying to contact me, please have them use this number. It's a Google Voice number. Uh, can I send a message blast to 44 students at once? Yeah, you could. But um, I know I've, I've heard people say, well, why don't I just load up, load up a big text change, check, text chain. <laughs> um, so if you load up the text chain, then you're also kind of spewing out everyone's phone numbers. And especially if you've created contacts, then you're exposing people's names with their phone numbers, which I believe would be a no-no. Um, so try to do this one-on-one, -on -one, right? Try to make it personal. Um, I wouldn't spam mail. Um, and um, if it's not free long-term for school districts, free through the rest of the year, your district has to request the the access if they want to authorize the district. Okay, so you have, yeah, you have the Google Suite thing, which I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about all the rules, but that would be a, a, an account that your school has. Um, and if you wanted to just not use, create a different email um, that you could use to place calls and a different email you could associate the phone number with, that might work instead of going through the institutions. Um, designated email. Um, let's see, uh, when, um, when I receive a call, am I able to see the person, uh, the name of the person calling me? Um, yes, if you create a contact for them. And um, so you create the contact and then you will be able to see who's calling you. Um, looking through my settings, uh, 
there is a section called payments. Um, isn't it free? Yes. Um, and that does refer to, oh, it says I have a current balance of 10 cents due. Um, maybe you called um, an internet, uh, placed an international call or uh, to you placed a call to um, a, a, a district that does have a charge. So do check that out. Um, but generally, there are no um, fees. Google doesn't charge you for this unless there's it's an international call. Um, I do not see how to change my email. Um, and so if you, again, for changing your email, you go into settings, um, and then you'll go into um, your account, and then you can transfer uh, the phone number, your linked numbers, your linked messages, outgoing calls, um, and then you can uh, get email alerts for uh, missed calls here. Um, and this is the Gmail account associated with it. So I can change that um, in my settings. I can change where, uh, which um, email address. Um, it says forward messages to email and it, I've selected this email to get it, to receive the numbers uh, or to, to receive the messages at. Read students' privacy. Is there a way to text message a group of students without seeing each other's phone numbers? N not that I know of. Um, it, when you send out that text, it'll. I, I, I just wouldn't do it. Just don't do that. Um, uh, and will students' parents see the name of who's calling? Many people won't pick up, pick up if the call is. Um, not from a known person. Yes, so you can combat that in two ways. You can front load them. You can say, this is me. This is my phone number. Um, and have that clearly stated somewhere in the materials you send students. And um, you can also um, create contacts um, so that you, you, can, you can tell who's calling you um, and they can tell and they can set you as a contact as well. Um, so is there a time limit for student messages? Um, I have not experienced a time limit. Um, and I have an account with Google Voice set up with my cell phone. The student already, know, already knows my Google Voice number. I want to open another account on my computer to reach my students. Um, in a bigger screen. Can I get the same number from Google Voice? Yeah, when you log in um, to your Google Voice account on your computer, you just log in using the same, um, same account and everything will be the same. You'll just open it up and you'll see all of your messages there. You'll see all your past voicemails. Everything you've done in, in that account will appear there. So it's it, when you make um, a a, um, an account on your computer, it's not changing the account. You don't have to create a, a different one. You just log in using the same account. Let me see. Can you send attachments like PDF files? Um, I believe so. Um, you can open up, when you open this, uh, down here, this icon, um, you can attach things that are in your Gmail uh, in your um, uh, from your desktop or for, from your Google account from your um, um, what is it called I'm blanking right now on what that's called <laughs> your Google um, oh what is it I can't I can't remember what it's called <laughs> um, but you can you can um, find things that in your Google account and and um, attach them and send them. Um, Okay, can students attach pictures of your, their homework? Yes, absolutely. They can take a picture and text it to you. Um, so that is definitely something you can do. Um, are there any more slides? No, there's no more slides, just ones to uh, refer you to how to um, get more information, more detailed information directly from Google um, and also from their message boards because these questions, these type of questions are infinite, really. Um, uh, there's lots of things like this people come up with, find like, well, what if I do this and that and this isn't working? How do I find that? I really refer to, to refer you to the, to, um, the Google Voice um, Blog, like little um, 
blogs and, and links and, and um, training uh, videos, um, they'll have a lot of advice for you. Um, so, and if I put seven names and numbers and send a bas batch message, um, yeah, don't, like, uh, don't send group texts. Can I use a camera for communication? Uh, no, you, there, there's no, um, no video, uh, calls, uh, using this, um, and the Google docs and uh, thank you. Okay. So but the, the word I was looking for earlier, thank you. Um, anonymous attendee is Google drive. <laughs> okay. So when you, when you link, when you click here, uh, the image file, it, it does, um, open up your Google drive. Um, Okay, let's see here. Can we make group calls? No, we cannot make group calls. Um, that I know of, you you might uh, somehow find it, somebody who figured out how to do that. Um, okay, I sent some group texts uh, in groups of three to seven. The students did see each other's numbers and they started a group conversation, it was a mistake on my part. Yeah, that's also, is that they start talking to each other and then you're gonna, every time they send a, a message to each other, it's gonna, you're gonna get that. So um, I don't know if you want all that traffic. Um, Katrina? Yes. So uh -huh. if you want, um, I still don't see where you can change the email address associated with the account. You, sh okay. uh, you showed the associated account, but not where to or how to change it. Okay. If you can't yeah. seem to find it. Okay. We have, um, we have somebody in the okay. chat, Diane Wilson is saying yeah. it's under account profile. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I don't see. Okay. That's what it is. I'm really sorry I can't find it for you right now, but it's it's very detailed. Uh, it gets into lots of different settings. Um, you can manage your Google account. Okay, so and you um, your data and personalization and account setup, your personal info. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have. Uh, I don't want to go into all of that right now. Um, but I can uh, look up that look up that question and give you screenshots when I can find it when I'm not inside this one. Um, let me move this. Okay. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I, okay. I I'm not sure um, how okay, to Katrina. to show you that right now. That's okay. So let me review some of the other questions and see because I, I I there was a little bit of overlap between you and me and I couldn't dismiss the questions as you were answering them live. And the questions will be included in the recording. So um, if you don't want to miss anything, tune into the recording. It will have the answers to the questions, and that's what we're going to wrap up with. So um, I'm going to go back up to the top of the question. The, if I turn on do not disturb, that means messages will be sent to an email for later viewing, correct? And yes. Yes, this basically the, the biggest questions here are, can I, uh, is it free? Yes, but there are some exceptions if you're making international calls. Don't play, uh, don't place uh, group texts, um, not good. Um, and um, yes, there are settings. I'm sorry, I cannot go deep into my account right now um, without exposing all of my personal information. Um, but the, there are ways to uh, change in, in the settings, um, change your, uh, the phone number you've chosen and then the email account that you are receiving um, all of this these texts and transcriptions too. Um, you cannot place uh, video calls, um, but you can text, call, um, leave voicemails, and you do have um, um, the option to block calls when and to um, to set it set a limit on when people are calling you. So you can just turn it off, right? So that you're not receiving um, text messages and calls from your, from your um, Google Voice account. All right, thank you, Katrina. I think, um, you know, there's Alexandra, are you still here? We have Alexandria who's saying, uh, my question, 
What about my question? To utilize my home phone with better reception instead of my linked cell number, can I do that without showing personal home number? That's that's the whole it's it's gonna if you whatever number you use to initiate the account, it's going to be disguised. It, it's not students won't see that number. That's the beauty of Google Voice. It'll be a, whatever phone number you pick will be the number they receive. All right, everyone, have a great weekend. I'm going to hit end and this will end our webinar for today. Thank you.